Uh, yes, we had the Susita in the 60s, 70s, and it didn't work out. And Better Place, which created a lot of buzz, but also didn't work out. But what's happening now with the whole digitalization era, where the vehicle is becoming much more technological, and we need optic visions and laters and sensors and AI, and all of these things that are required today for, for creating this future, uh, this is Israel's strengths. We're back with Orly Dahan from Ecomotion, talking about the Israeli companies that are leading innovation in automotive tech. The list of success stories is long. Argus was just bought for almost half a billion dollars. Right, right. Um, Mobileye and Intel, of course, the yes. biggest deal in history. Yes, of course. Um, you have Innovis, which is getting close to $100 million in, yeah. in, in rounds. And, and myself, I saw, you know, um, a big OEM say, I want to invest. And they, they couldn't add any more investors right. <laughs> since it's so much demand. Right. Innoviz develops computer vision that self-driving cars need to see the road and make decisions in real time. For now, the car's eyes come in the form of LiDAR, a detection system that works on the principle of radar but uses a pulsing laser beam to measure distance. Until recently, LiDAR required a large spinning apparatus that is bulky and expensive. InnoViz has developed a proprietary solid-state device that packs LiDAR into a small form factor and has exponentially reduced costs, taking this technology one step closer to mass deployment. Around the time of our tour of InnoViz HQ, the company had just announced that its technology would be included in every BMW by the year 2020. And InnoViz has just announced a deal with Hyrain, a tier one automotive component supplier in China. It means that this company has direct access to a marketplace that manufactures 26 million vehicles per year. So what you're looking at is the first uh, samples of the InnoViz Pro coming out from our production line. The information that you see on top of the range is also what we call reflectivity. So per pixel that we collect the, the time of flight, we also measure the amount of flight. And that is very useful when you want to classify an object. For example, you see the, the car here, you can see not only the shape, you can also see like kind of like the shades of the, of the car, right. the shape of the car. It almost looks like a low resolution video image, right. even yeah. though that that's based off of 3D mapping, right? Exactly. What you see, the picture that you see on the, on the bottom is, is just like a 2D uh, image that when you take the 3D information, like uh, throw out the, the range information, you get on the reflectivity, you can use it to uh, realize that this is a person uh, and you know, this is a car. You She's see, carrying you, a bag, you, for yeah, example. And you, can yeah. see, and you can see the lanes, uh, which is not very common in LiDARs. When do you think most production models of cars will start to have LiDAR in them? Really, the first, uh, the first market that you will see starting maybe even next year, maybe in small volume, uh, is the shuttles, autonomous shuttles, mm -hmm. because it's the most simple like, you can a, think like about, a college campus shuttle. Right, something it's like, like that. a point A to point B, which right. is a pre designed, pre mapped, etc. Right. It's like the simplest. Low speed. Low speed. So these are, these are probably what you're going to see very soon. Okay. Then you'll see trucks, autonomous trucks, which is mostly highway mm -hmm. and solving a big problem there. And there is a very strong business case around trucks. For sure of the professional driving yeah the next step is obviously the next professional drivers which are the the ta taxi drivers right. so you see you will see robot taxis and then you'll see uh, the first level three uh, like private cars like a car that you can buy with an upgrade for autonomous driving for autopilot mm -hmm. like the bmw for mm -hmm. example it all goes down to kind of like maturity of the technology and cost of course. And uh, I think we, we are really uh, a big part of, you know, really enabling this because without a technology that is, uh, you know, really high performance yeah. at relevant costs, it won't happen. So it may not be so long before we have cars that can see and understand the road, but what about other modes of transportation? That's the value proposition of Here Mobility, a company that wants to make all modes of transportation seamless with what they're calling a mobility marketplace.